three, two, one. What's going on, everyone? You're watching Ash on Comics. I'm Ash. This is today's comic, Freedom Fighters number six, by Robert Venditti. This name? You should know this name. If you don't know this name, then you're not reading good comics. I'm sorry, but we can help. Really, dog? Every time you start 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 a video, they're like, "Oh, oh, it's time! I gotta get my in the limelight." <laughs> um, Overman unleashed. Look at this. I don't know if you've been following my videos or if you've actually been reading the comic. This book I bought purely off of this name right here. Hashtag Great Hawkman. But it started off kind of slow. I'll be honest. Um, I was a little like, "Oh, really? Should I be getting this?" Um, and then I was kind of having a little bit of buyer's remorse. And then issue two came out and I was like, oh, okay, this is good. Issue two felt like it should have been part of issue one. Like issue one should have been a double-sized debut issue. I really think DC dropped that. Because if you just read the first issue, you're like, I don't see this comic going anywhere. But the second feels, it feels like a comic book was cut in half and not feel, it doesn't feel like two separate books. Anyways, so I was like, okay, so I kept sticking with the book. And then three came, and I was like, oh, this is solid, solid. And then four was like, oh, it's getting better. Five is like the best issue yet. What about issue six? Let's take a look. Oh, please. DC. Do you see this guy here? This is who you should be promoting. Not this guy. This comic's already canceled. <sighs> ah, this is one of the best opening pages of a comic I've read in a long time and it's super super simple sometimes the simple is the hardest to do a doomed planet desperate scientists a last hope oh sounds familiar right genocidal tyrant <laughs> oh shit so on the surface you look at these three panels and go oh, I've seen this before a million times right like, <laughs> oh, damn, this, I was reading this and this is immediately like, oh, this is, this is terrifying, <laughs> terrifying. Um, for Clark Kent, or, you know, sorry, Kal-El, little baby Kal-El to crash in 1930s Germany, you know, type thing. Ah, here it is, the Overman. Your name is Overman. Overman serves the fear. Your name is Overman. Overman serves the fear. They do this. He's in his chamber of yellow light. He's being charged. Here we have the credits. Welcome to Earth X, where Nazi Germany's metahuman war machine conquered the planet. Chapter 6, Overman Returns. So this is a very, obviously, very Elseworlds story. Um, so I like that. It gives it total creative freedom to do all these cool things and yet use familiar uh, characters and ideas that we like. I do not know the Freedom Fighters at all. Truth be told, when I bought the first issue, I didn't even know Freedom Fighters had existed before this miniseries. Now, these Freedom Fighters are different than the Freedom Fighters of the past. It's a new generation. Um, but all the same, it's the same concept, same, same world, uh, I, I believe. Um, and here we have Overman. And we have... The sons, the lineage of Adolf. Uh, I think this is Adolf's grandson. And then this is his great-grandson. And, of course, they're a bunch of nitwits, which is how things work. If you have a, a great genius tyrant takes over the sons of that tyrant. And even if he's a benevolent tyrant, whatever. The sons always turn out to be worse than the father because... You achieve greatness through hardship. Hardship, or, or then greatness, then breeds in turn delinquency. Um, these people had a soft life. They grew up as you know rulers of the planet. So well, they're not going to be good people, of course not. And uh, they're like arguing about releasing the Overman. Make sure he knows. And they're concerned that his psychological training, which is the only thing that holds him in check, right? That he'll continue to follow um, the fear because it's the most dangerous weapon on the planet and then they must maintain control. 
hidden in the forests of Vermont, the Blue Tracer, Mobile HQ of the Freedom Fighters. So they're working on the ship, very Millennium Falcon style. Um, little, I don't know, if, I, I, I'm not going to say it's an homage, but it brought that back to me. Like, I just, um, and you got these characters, this adventure, uh, Freedom Fighters, which Rebels are Freedom Fighters, Star Wars. I mean, there's a lot of uh, crossover similarities here if you like that kind of story, and I do, which is why I'm reading this book, then this might be the book for you. Uncle Sam is a personification of the American spirit of freedom, and uh, I don't really know much more about who he literally is, but he's a superpowered being, and the more America believes in freedom and is patriotic and whatever, the more powerful he gets. So the freedom fighters have succeeded in waking him up due to their actions. That was the first part of their plan. And um, they're trying to get Uncle Sam to talk and different things and introducing themselves and he can't remember and they're explaining. This is where you kind of explain how things happened in other previous freedom fighter stories. Like apparently this multiversity masterman, there's a story um, and he's like, I can't remember. So Venditti does this clever device of bringing people like me who don't know shit about what happened in the past by using uh, Uncle Sam here to be like, I don't remember what happened and have to be explained to. So they explain um, that they had to go into hiding and all this stuff. And because of this, the spirit of freedom went away. That's why he says we learn to be visible. Um, and then now Overman's on the search. Uh, and we never let up, Sammy. We hit the Razzis big in broad daylight. Attacks that couldn't be covered up. And then we see they're flipping back and forth. The, the, the Nazis are talking to Overman. The terrorists must be captured quickly. They're too dangerous now that Uncle Sam has returned. It worked. The more we did, the more word spread. People believed in America again. And because they believed again, you, the avatar of American spirit, were able to come back and fight. But no one will guess what we're going to do next. We have a plan. I see them, Führer. Guys, I hear something. Sounds like a sonic boom. <laughs> and just jumps right in. Terrorist located. Heil Hitler. And wow, I was saying in the, in the earlier reviews of this book, one of the reasons I love... Uh, just, I love resistance stories, like freedom fighter type stories. Um, Star Wars being an obvious favorite, but another big one is Terminator. Um, you know, you have the humans resisting against the alien, or sorry, robot overlords. This is very, and it's a terrifying nature of like the Terminator. And it's just, one thing that makes a good resistance story is that sort of um, uh, just, up against all odds, just like, there's no way we can stop this. The threat is too big. Um, that's what made Star Wars really good. It's like, how do you beat the Empire? How do you beat someone like, you know, Darth Vader? Uh, same thing here. How do you beat the Terminators? How do you beat Overman? This is just, you know, if you're a DC Comics person, you know Superman. If Superman shows up, like, these guys are just like, what the, what do you do? 1956, a free world no more. And it cuts back to the history Overman, champion of the Third Reich, six decades of darkness. 2016, a ragtag team of outcasts, a new hope for the world. So I'm I'm interpreting this meaning in 2016. There was a story that I missed of freedom fighters and a heartfelt loss. So here we see Overman, and it looks like Supergirl version of whatever, Overgirl, <laughs> I don't know. The Blue Tracer now. Terrorists, you are guilty of treason against the Reich. It's over, man. He found us. Lady, teleport him out of here. <laughs> so she opens up a portal and he flies through. No, not him. And he flies. Boom, crashes. Oh, where? And then they stand up. Dear God, nobody's seen him in years. The books say he single-handedly beat, like, the world. Don't believe everything you've heard, Featherhead. He's just one man. He isn't a man. He's over man, says Uncle Sam. This is a cool shot. I love the. This is kind of a cool comic trope. You can come with me alive, or you can come barely alive. Your campaign of terror is over. You and your government are the terrorists, Goose Stepper. 
we are freedom fighters. And Old Man just takes care of Uncle Sam. Well, not sorry, that's Bomb, Bomb, Bomb Man. And he's sitting there holding his gun. Bomb, smoke his jack, jack boot ass condor. <laughs> it's just like the sky is my turf, Old Man. And of course, he's never dealt with Old Man. Doesn't know he's getting into. And you just know the futility of this. He's shooting his little rockets and stuff. And Overman's like, then I'll take it back. And just rips his wings off. You're just like, oh, damn. I'll take everything from you. And I just want to say this, like, like an Arnold Schwarzenegger accent. And it would be, like, appropriate, except I can't really do Arnold very well. Um, take this, ROTC tool. And <laughs> Dahlman is just shooting him on his head. <laughs> I don't just think it's funny. He's just like, ah, you want to play with fire? We'll see who burns. Gotta get in the fight. You aren't strong enough yet, Sam. Freedom fighters, we gotta retreat. Where's Bomb? And this is reminding me of a few issues ago when they had to retreat and uh, Condor was left. And they're like, we gotta go. And that's a great type of uh, trope of these kind of stories where people get lost and it's just like, they get their ass kicked and it's it's overwhelming. They're up like I said, they're up against all odds. These type of stories can't work if the characters just defeat the threat and it's like, oh yeah, we're the free, we beat them. That's kind of what makes the new Star Wars movies kind of fail because. And again, I'm not I'm not trashing the new Star Wars films because I actually I actually do. Spoiler alert! I'd, I'd like Last Jedi. I know I'm gonna lose like half my audience now, um, but there are failings in these movies. Of that I will admit, and one of that is just like, oh, I'm just good, and I kick ass, and you know these characters are good, but the threat is even greater. Um, and Venditti, being a, a you know one of the top writers in the business, knows how to tell these type of stories, and he's just like we, you know, yeah, he gets, he will put these guys through the grinder before it has any chance of getting uh, success. Just like Americans, I'll talk. I've been waiting for you, a guy like you. Oh, sorry. I've been waiting for a guy like you, Overman. Turns around. Huh? Someone who can really take a punch. And then we get Bomb Man just boom, just cold clocking him full force. And we've seen the destruction this guy can wreck. Um, and this book, man, it's just not, once the action starts, it doesn't stop. This is good classic comic book writing. Um, solid tale. You're, you're, it's white knuckle suspense of like, oh, what are these guys going to do? They've got a villain who's... I've said this before, and someone said it before me. A strong villain makes for better heroes. When your villain is awesome, your heroes are better. And one of the things that modern comics fail in is they make these wimpy-ass villains that just get their asses whooped no problem all the time it's like you know you watch read a captain marvel comic and there'll be a villain and she'll just be like oh smack around boom boom no problem it's like well, so the, the villain was stupid it, it doesn't make you awesome that you smacked around the villain it makes you seem weak the fact that uh these resistance fighters are getting their asses smoked by nazi superman is gonna make their deeds that much more heroic it's gonna make their successes feel that much more meaningful but this, the action being told and shown in this book is great. Um, and then we get this cut scene here. And again, back to Terminator uh, kind of feel. <laughs> Look at this. Like just the, the soundtrack. You know, the fire. Remember the Terminator emerges from the fire. Dun, 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 dun. This is the best you have. And um, he's a cyborg? Get up, Bomb, please. I'll peel the skin from all of you. Go now, bomb, bomb. And they have to teleport out. And then bomb pulls off his helmet. <sighs> They're safe. Clean getaway. Give me a sec to catch my breath and we'll get back to business. Silence, terrorist. S Silence, terrorist. You're interfering with my video. Oh, jeez. I swear, I'll be sitting here prepping and doing other things. For an hour, no, nothing. As soon as I start recording, oh, it makes me thirsty. I guess making me, me talking makes them thirsty. Someone else wants to talk to you. 2016, crushed by regret, a solemn retreat. 
So presumably from the images we saw before. And again, I'm speaking like a total ignorant person. If you've read the previous books, fantastic. You can feel free to enlighten me in the comments, but I haven't. And that's important because this writing should not require you to have read the previous books. And Venditti's not, but I saw in a previous panel this character holding the body of Supergirl or whatever her version is, and he's crushed and he flies off into space. The cover-up to hide the truth that Nazi science combines with Kryptonian DNA, innumerable failures, 2018, and one success. Heinrich H. Henshaw, a cyborg overman. Dun, dun, dun. Somewhere else in the Green Mountains. Bomb, bomb. And so they're lamenting the loss of one of their own. We've got to go back. Doll woman, we've only chain ported 10 miles. If that thing's ears work like Overman's did, he'll hear you. This is all wrong. We brought back Uncle Sam. This is supposed to be the turning point. And then Uncle Sam says, Revolutions can't be won by a person. Not even me. Revolutions are won by the people. We lost Bomb and got taken apart in seconds. Who can fight that? That isn't the question we should ask. If the Overman we just fought was a cyborg, what happened to the real Overman? Good question. This ain't the end. We're the freedom fighters, and that means something. And then he gives his speech, um, and they all put their hands together, and Dolan stands in the middle. We do it for Bomb. Let's go get us a plastic man. So they talked about how their plan is still going to go on. And notice it's plas SS stick man. Um, you've seen that in previous. This was a good book. This book has solidified what I was saying before about Venditti. And this was a slow burn. And it kind of reminds me of Hawkman. Yes, by the way, hashtag, if I haven't said already, hashtag read Hawkman. Best comic on the shelf right now. And I was reading this when it first started out, first issue, even the second issue, which made the first issue better, as I explained. Um, this still wasn't on that level. Venditti did Exo Man War back in 2012. One well, of the best series I've ever read. Uh, Hawkman is just fucking through the moon. Like, it's, I look at Venditti and I'm like, I expect greatness. And then I read this and I was like, oh, I think my expectations were too high. But I was still continuing to buy it because of the name. And I'm like, this is 12 issues. There's a lot more story that's going to happen here. That's what I kept telling myself. And I was right. By about issue four, it started picking up. Issue four was the cool action scene with Condor. Then issue five, we got to see a lot more of the history of the world. And they introduced the Overman. And then issue six, he gets unleashed. And at this point in the book, it is... We're in a solidly in the middle of act two. And the... Intensity is ramped up. The action is good. I'm really enjoying the art, which didn't win me over at first. Um, this was terrifying, like the, the way the scenes were and just feeling for these characters. Uh, Venditti, like, in what little time he had, built these characters up a little so you could feel for them. That's important. Um, to just launch right into the action with characters that you don't know would have been a mistake. And I think that slow burn was necessary. Unfortunately, people probably dropped off this comic because they didn't feel like it was going anywhere and we have short attention spans these days, but this is good now. This is something that Eric Breen, if you're watching, I recommend if as an old school classic comics fan, the way comics used to be fun, good heroics, adventures with big bad guys, no bullshit, this is it. Venditti, man. I cannot praise him highly enough. This is not his best comic, but that doesn't matter. He's still better than 90% of what people, you know, the other creators in comics. And I, I don't even care about so much. Like, I want, I want, I'm a main continuity person. Like, I really wish Vin Diddy was doing Superman. Oh, man, that'd be amazing. But I do care about this. It's so good. So big thumbs up for me. Best issue so far, and we have six more issues to go. I'm very much excited now. This is totally picked up like I was hoping that it would, um, and I was kind of predicting. Thank you so much for watching. Tell me what you think about this comic if you're if you're not reading it. Tell me if you're getting inclined maybe to read it now. Um, I th I think it's worth it. I'm not a I usually don't like to promote 
miniseries because they they end. You know that they're ending. Like I like ongoing stuff, but a lot of people like miniseries. So if you're one of those people who wish comics were like miniseries, boom, here you go. You got your 12 issue miniseries, and this is fun. So thanks for watching. Stan approves. Me purely speaking for Stan, of course, um, but I think Stan would approve. See you next time. It's time for another JL8 webcomic, number 33, by Yale Stewart. Bring -ing 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 -ing. Well, we made it to recess without any incidents other than Barry's diaper comment. Honestly, I think we got ourselves all worked up for nothing. How naive. We're not in the clear till tomorrow when I'm able to put the plan into effect. In the meantime, we need to... Um, excuse us. Oh, great. This playground is for big kids only.